Hi everyone, welcome to the Cypress course. In today's video, we will learn about Cypress architecture and how is it different from other tools. We will see some key differences. Most of the tools present in the market are basically Selenium based. So which is why they all share the same problem. That is they run the remote commands across the network and they operate outside the browser. So the execution is not that faster for them, but with Cypress, it has overtaken all the competitors by operating inside the browser, which means it makes our browser capable of executing the test code by itself. So its architecture is completely different from uh, Selenium. Its architecture is more capable of listening to and modifying the browser at the runtime. So that means you can manipulate the DOM, you can alter the network request and respond on the fly. So with Cypress, we get complete control of the testing uh, the app from both front end and back end. Cypress is based on Node.js, which means Cypress and Node process constantly. They communicate and uh, perform tasks on the behalf of each other. So that means having access to both parts, front end and the back end, it gives us the ability to respond to our applications event in the real time. At the same time, performing the execution outside the browser makes it little, you know, it, it requires a little higher privilege, which are there for uh, tools like Selenium. I've created a sample diagram, which would be easier to explain the architecture of uh, Cypress and uh, would be able to understand the key difference of it from the other tool. So let's see. So first of all, we'll see the Selenium architecture and then we'll move to Cypress architecture, but then we will understand how is it different because we should have some base against which we are comparing the Cypress. Okay. So this is Selenium architecture in which let's say you write on the left side, we have Selenium client libraries like Java, Ruby, Python. So where you write your code, then it interacts with the browser instance. It sends the request using JSON via protocol. And uh, let's say you want to run your test case on Chrome or Firefox. So for Firefox, they use Geekko driver for Chrome driver. And then these browser instances send the commands to the browser and where your application is running basically. But the test case you see, there is a middleware browser instances, which is which is a, uh, which makes your test case execution outside the browser. It does not have the direct access to the browser because the browser instance is, the, is in the center. Whereas in Cypress, so this is the architecture of Cypress. So Cypress does not have any middleware. It does not have any, you know, it directly communicates with the browser. So it's built on the Node.js. We installed Cypress on our operating system. So this is OS on which it is built on Node.js. We'll install, we should have Node.js for running our Cypress test case. So we have Cypress on, on the node or the left side, as well as you can see Cypress on the browser side as well. So it interacts, it starts with a proxy, you can see proxy over here, and it sends a request and response. So with this, it as it runs directly inside the browser, it has more command over the DOM and the network request. So you can change them at the runtime. So Cypress have few disadvantages as well. Let's say Cypress is not open, the handling of new tab is not supported in Cypress. But with its feature of running inside the browser, it makes easier for Cypress to handle all these things. So because we are running inside the DOM, you can easily manipulate and run your cases. So if you want to open a new tab in Cypress, as it runs inside the DOM, you will you can easily access the DOM because it's running inside the browser and you can manipulate the DOM so that we can change the attribute so that it can run open the new tab in the same browser. So this is the benefit of Cypress because with Cypress, you have the access to both parts, which is backend and the front end. So which gives us the ability to respond to our application events in the real time while uh, for the different for, with Selenium or other tools, it requires a different um, higher privilege. It control all the entire automation process from top to down. Let's say you want to perform your end to end testing, you want to perform unit testing. So this is all done by Cypress. So in single tool, you can perform everything. You don't have to install multiple tools. Let's say you want to like with others, let's say you're using Selenium, you're using 
doing web testing for API using REST assured, but it's with Cypress. So Cypress is saying just focus on your test automation, the rest of the things we will handle. So it is a bundled thing in which you can do end to end testing. Okay. And also one thing is because Cypress was made keeping in mind not only for the QAs, but also they uh, kept in mind about the developers. So that's why it is really fast because developers have to perform mostly developers perform unit test cases in which they test units, not whole end to end test cases. So for those cases, they might have to stub because they just want to test their unit and not whole application. So all these things are properly handled in Cypress. And as it is installed locally on our operating system, so it has access to our operating system where we can download, perform tasks like taking screenshots, videos, or general file system operations. And in fact, the network operation as well. It's possible through Cypress. I've created a mind map. We'll see how, if we want to run our test case, how we can do with other tools and how we can run, do with the Cypress. Let me show you. So see, how do you run your test case? So with other tools, what you do? You choose a framework. Let's say you want to choose Mocha, Jasmine, or Karma, or some other tool framework. Then you configure like with Selenium or Playwright. Then you have to choose some Selenium wrapper, which can be Nightwatch, WebDriver. And then you choose library, assertion library, like Chai or other libraries. So, and if you want to perform some additional tasks, let's say you want to read and write, you have to perform, uh, install some other libraries, like sign on, test double, so you can install. But with Cypress, if you see, it is all in one testing framework. It comes with assertion, it comes with assertion library, it comes with mocking, it comes with stubbing. And as it is built on Node.js and it has direct access to the browser, so it's quite fast. And the thing is the language which is supported by Cypress is JavaScript because JavaScript is a language of web, but it works perfectly fine for all the modern webs. Let's say your web application is based on the framework like Angular, React. So Cypress perfectly works fine with that and it's quite faster also. Let's go to the official website of Cypress and we'll see more key differences which they have mentioned. So they are saying the architecture is completely different, which we just saw with the diagram, like with Selenium, we have the client server in which we write our code and then through JSON protocol, it sends the request to browser instance, which further sends it to browser. But with Cypress, it directly interacts with the browser. There is no middleware. So that is how the architecture is different. So they have provided a detailed explanation over here. We can also read if you want to read more about it, but the main concept, the summary, I told you already, this is how the architecture is different. Okay. Uh, second one is it has native access to everything, which means because it runs inside the browser, so it can access your DOM, it can access your network requests, you can easily manipulate your DOM if you want to debug your test case, if you want to check Chrome through Chrome Dev tool, the console logs, you can easily do that. So that is what they have mentioned. Uh, yeah, this is the explanation. It uh, has native access to every single object, uh, whether it is window, document, DOM element, you can easily access them because it is it runs inside the browser and uh, there is no over the wire protocol okay next one is whole kind of testing is possible that means it supports multiple kind of testing you can do unit testing you can do integration testing you can do component testing and you can do end-to-end -end testing so whole bundle bunch of testing you can perform with cypress which is amazing single tool for all the uh, type of testing so they, they have explained over here in detail uh, how it is it can support multiple kind of testing so uh, maybe i can explain you some points let's say stop the browser of your application let's say when any developer is doing unit testing or because or you are performing some unit testing and you just want to test that unit not the whole so in that case you might need to stop it stop the other part because you just want to test your unit and you don't want to perform integration testing so so they have mentioned in that case maybe you want to stop so stop the browser or the application function and perform them to behave as needed so stop means you are basically creating 
uh, mock with the expected result let's say you are testing maybe a payment payment page in which you are testing the order service and you want to test only order service but you don't want to test it with a shopping cart end to end so in that case maybe you can stop the shopping cart response and test the order service so order service will call uh, will call the shopping cart and because you have stopped it you have that expected result and you can test your order service how it is you know behaving for with the expected result with the with a negative result you can do that all that functions uh, yeah they have explained all the other parts as well in detail but uh, the most part is yes we can test the edge cases we can check how it responds to the error on the server we can modify the response status code we can also modify the dom elements like forcing the hidden elements to be shown this is a very useful feature from cypress because on your test in your web application sometimes let's say we have a hidden element we know it is it is uh, there on the ui but it has that attribute hidden so we can't perform action on that but with cypress we can modify the dom elements we can force it to click that element and we can continue with our, with our execution in the upcoming videos we will see all this like how we can handle the hidden elements how we can force our element to form that action we will see it in detail Okay, it uses third party plugins instead of fuzzing with a complex widget like multi select drop downs, tree views, calendars. It directly it call method directly from your test code to control them. So yeah, you can directly control your uh, the actions on the on the web like multi select, auto complete, drop down. It's very easier and simpler with Cypress. Okay, so if they have provided more about about the kind of testing which is possible next one is you can programmatically take shortcuts so let's read about that so let's say you are trying to test how to reach each areas of application maybe let's say you have you want to test a login form in your application for that you want to log into your application then run the then test the login form but maybe there can be scenarios because web applications are made of made up of, of uh, modern web let's say your application is made from angular or uh, react and maybe it uses a framework like chakra which changes the class or dynamically every time creates a different dynamic locators in those cases it can be difficult for you to perform if you don't have a unique locator but you can so this is one of the examples which i'm telling you for an automation engineer what you can do with cypress as it performs API and web testing both. Maybe you can use the API testing for login and then perform the web testing for the login form. Because if your locators are already available for the login form, but you are you know blocked by login, username and password entering that, maybe that locator is not fixed, or maybe you are blocked due to some other reason. So this is one of the case where you can maybe divide your test case in such a way like you can perform api testing and then perform the web testing in a single test case you can send the http request directly and uh, still you can have those requests synchronized with the browser so that is a really amazing feature and um, like they have explained in detail like you don't mean it no longer you have to wait for a login page to type in username and password also maybe if you don't want uh, to test that part from the front end, you can test it through API and you can do end to end. You can also do uh, maybe write API testing and web testing together and uh, do this in a single test. Okay. Cypress is not flaky because it has automatic weights inbuilt. That means before moving to a next command, it checks that element is visible or not, that element is loaded or not. So by default, it has some. Uh, timeout configured we can again change it also as per our requirement maybe if we have performance issues on the web application but uh, most of the times it's very uh, useful command it it actually checks for that element is present or not before moving to the next for assertions also it do the same thing so they have mentioned cypress knows and understand that happens in your application synchronously it's notified the moment the page loads the moment the page unloads so it's impossible for cypress you know to miss the element when any fire events come so it knows how fast an element is animating or uh, it, it has to wait for that element 
you know to perform further action so it automatically waits because it has an inbuilt automatic wait configured it wait for that element to be visible and it wait for that element to become enabled and then stopping covered when pages begin to transition cypress pause the command execution until the full page is loaded so we can also configure change the configuration for the page load timeout or default timeout like how long we want our element to be uh, searched like that wait time we can change again in the cypress configuration which we will see in the upcoming videos it executes vast majority of the commands inside the browser so there is no network lag that means the test cases are less flaky in cypress because it runs inside the browser and it executes and drive your application as fast as it is capable of rendering so it just tests your application like a normal user is testing it's not like uh, any robot is testing so it's it's like that it automatically waits for an element to exist and then it moves to the next command or assertion okay. next one is debuggability's first class so because with cypress we can easily access dom and network so and we can easily check the console logs so it's very easier to de debug with cypress also cypress has this cloud platform where we can get the access to check the performance of our test case let's say you want to test <coughs> you want to test if your uh, tests are flaky or not like how maybe there's a test case which is passing twice and maybe failing three times we want to check that configuration we, we can do in the cypress cloud we can check the flaky test cases also there are other uh, features which are provided by cypress cloud which is really easy and helpful to debug it so yes these are the main key features which is uh, which makes cypress different from other tools in the market in next video we will learn about how to install and write our first test case in cypress